You normally find elegant evening gowns and fine men's suits and nice shops and boutiques. Well, Ken Wilshire met a clothing designer in Chattanooga who creates nice fashions, but you won't find them in any stores, partially because he gets his materials from the junkyard. If you can endure the monotony of meticulously drilling holes into thousands of bottle caps, then release your tensions by pounding every top as flat as can be. Maybe then you could begin to feel the satisfaction of creating a truly unique work of art like this. This chic apparel is the work of Chattanooga artist John Petrie. You might call him a couturier of scrap or haberdasher of hand-me-downs. Instead of new bolts of silk, taffeta, or lame, this is where John's finery often begins, in a junkyard filled with unknown treasures just waiting for him to start putting on the Ritz. Where'd this come from? Uh, actually, they came out of the lofts on Main, right down the street. Yeah. Local. Well, you got time. I have, it. I have the That's complete sure. provenance on it. <laughs> <laughs> so it does have a little history to it. Very cool. I'm always in search of materials, vintage materials, found objects, new materials that I age. I work a lot with wood, steel, aluminum, and copper. And I like to control what those materials do. I take a hard, flat piece of steel and shape it to flow like fabric. From a distance, people will think they are real dresses and real suits, and then they get up close and they'll knock on it with their hand and figure it's metal, you know, and then the joke rolls around to, could you make me one I could wear? And the answer is, yes, of course I could, but you couldn't sit down. And it's not how you feel, it's how you look. John creates the forms in his studio and dresses them to the nines with everything from the bottle caps and yardsticks to roofing shingles, playing cards, tin ceiling tiles, and more. John, when I see all these uh, old signs, I see these maybe going in someone's den or family room or even a vacation house, uh, you see something totally different. What, what do you see? Well, a lot of times uh, I'll just see a pair of man's pants made out of them or a skirt or maybe an accent piece on a top, a uh, collar, for example. Uh, that's what I look for. So I'll research something and then if I have a certain look that I want, I will try to apply materials that I'm fascinated with or sometimes I find the materials and I'm going, the light bulb goes on in my head and it's like, this is a skirt or this is a suit. And it's that obvious to me. John says it all began by being raised as an only child by hardworking parents and watching way too much television. No. No what? No, I won't have any. <laughs> I have yet to meet anybody whose mom made breakfast in pearls in an apron. I just didn't happen, but they sure did it on Leave it to Beaver and Ozzie and Harriet. You know, the women were always perfectly dressed. The men pretty much always had a tie on or at least a, a nice sweater with a, a dress shirt. And playing with that whole perfection that television had in the midst of the Vietnam War, a drug culture, racial issues in the country, Everything was perfect on television. So with these perfect world images of clothing in his mind, instead of sewing with needle and thread, John's dressmaking process started much like roofing a house or pop riveting sheet metal, only with flair and style. And then we get into the technical aspect, actually the construction of what I do, working with rotationally cast resin, wire, hardware cloth, fiberglass, foam, rivets, all different kinds of materials to make a very solid, lightweight structure that I can clad with the different materials that I work with. One of my favorite pieces that I have here is Carmen, uh, kind of after Carmen Miranda. Uh, once again, something influenced by the 60s. It's the adult female piece that the skirt is made out of knives, forks, and spoons. 
and they're blow molded plastic knives, forks and spoons, and the top is copper, and the collar is soda pop cans that are very frilly looking. The stunning dresses are much more than whimsical manifestations of the perfect world he experienced years ago. They represent incredible creativity. You have to refresh your brain. And I constantly have people say to me, they see my clothing series and they will say, you're so creative, how do you do that? I have no creativity in me at all. And I say, yes, you do. You're just hiding it. You're, you aren't letting it come out. You have fear of saying who you are and saying what you do. And I tell people, I said, if you want to paint, go buy paints, paint something. You don't have to show it to anybody. And when you're done with it, you can burn it if you don't like it. But the process is what's important to be creative and express yourself in some way. And just like everything else he creates, there's something about each one that toys with our imaginations and emotions. I'm happy that my work speaks to people. Making somebody smile, what more can you ask for?